Have you ever been talking to a coworker and the thought pops in your head, do they get paid more than me? If you've had this thought, you're definitely not alone. I think everyone at some point in their career has had this thought, what do my coworkers make? What do people who are doing the same role and have the same experience as me, do they make more than me? Or worse yet, am I underpaid? Today we are going to talk about how to know if you're underpaid and also too, I really wanna share with you that Levels FYI recently released a report on the top paying jobs and we're gonna dive into that a little bit and also too, tips on how to ensure you are not being underpaid. All right, let's get into it. One thing when I was doing research for this video that I kept on thinking about is, does underpaid solely mean the amount of money you are making? The short answer is no, I don't think it does. You can be paid fairly, but if you are feeling as though you are being devalued, your coworkers are putting you down, or just not appreciating what you are doing and bringing to the table, that in its own right can make you feel underpaid. You can never have enough money if you are feeling this way that people aren't grateful for you. And I don't mean that in a, uh, take, take, take kind of way, but I mean maybe it's a sign that you should get out. Before we get into tips though on really how you can understand if you are underpaid, I wanted to share with you a bit of insight that Levels.FYI recently released on their top paying or highest paying jobs. And this is really interesting because two reasons. One, it does a really good job of showing transparency, what companies are hiring from junior to senior level engineers and what they are paying. Now, keep in mind, this is total compensation. This is not just base salary. And I really wanted to highlight that because I don't want there to be any mix ups here thinking this is base salary. No, this is total compensation. And I mean, the base salary is pretty nice too, though, let's be real. Uh, for a lot of these companies are paying very high base salaries too. But the point of this is transparency. We need more of this. And I think this is a great place to start. All right, let me pull it up on screen. Okay, I have it up on my screen here. And as you can see, the lowest total compensation, this is in US dollars for an entry level engineer is 220. That's mind blowing. This means this is mostly people who are graduating from university and they're starting with this. This is definitely, definitely not what I started with when I uh, started my first job. It was at a non for profit. So that also <laughs> made it very, very low in salary. Uh, but as you can see the headquarters, there is a trend here. Most of them are in California. Now a question I get asked is, well, Tiff, I don't live in the United States. I live in Canada. I live in Asia, I live in Europe, wherever you live, can I work for these companies? And the answer is maybe. What I mean by that is a lot of these companies nowadays are hiring for remote workers, especially engineers that can work can be done from anywhere. And what I think is really important is when you are looking at applying to these companies who are based out of the United States, ensuring that you are getting paid in US dollars, or at least your compensation is in US and then translated into whatever currency you are in. And this is definitely possible. A lot of companies do this. So really keep that in mind. Next up, we have engineer two and engineer two is typically two to five years of experience. So you're still, you're mid in your career, relatively new still. And as they can say here, ability to mentor engineers, provide technical guidance, code reviews, design and deliver on small projects. And your impact is typically at the intermediate scope. So you're, you're, you're midway through and the salary or total compensation, I should say is pretty high for this Airbnb being the lowest at 318 and Databricks being the highest at 443. That is high. That's really high. And this is just for the end of year report for 2022. So this is this past year and taking into consideration everything that's going on in the tech industry. I really think it's really uh, important to showcase this as well because we focus the news and we like to focus on the negatives and the layoffs and all of that, but there's still so much out there, so much opportunities in the tech industry. All right, let's do one more. Let's go to engineer three, senior engineer. So for levels FYI, they say typically five plus years experience and typically 30% of employees, less than 30% of employees in a company are at this level. So this is very senior. All right, so we can see here Databricks. What is Databricks? I'm not super familiar with them. Data bricks. We're Googling this. Oh yes, of course. Okay. So Databricks, yes, a web-based platform for working with Spark that provides automated cluster management with Python style notebooks. Let's see here. I've never used it though. Have you used Databricks before? If you have, leave in the comments your thoughts around it. Data analytics and AI. Hmm. Anyways, Databricks, you pay really well. 
that is amazing. And number seven for this is LinkedIn, which is 458. So still really, really good. And I find it interesting actually that even for level one, level two, level three, for total compensation, you don't see a lot of fang on this, which is very interesting. And I think it maybe goes to show that sometimes maybe fang is a bit overhyped. All right. Now that we know what some of the top paying roles are in this industry, let's go back to the purpose of this video is how do you uncover if you're being underpaid? One of the best ways to uncover if you are being paid properly is to ask people what they're getting paid. Tiff, that is not appropriate. You can't just ask people what they're getting paid. Well, you kind of can. And I do it all the time, to be honest. And if people ask me, I'm pretty transparent. Granted, I don't just share it with the internet, but if people have real meaningful conversations, whether it be my friends, whether it be people that I've connected to for mentorships, etc., that I have built a relationship with, and I feel it is appropriate to ask, what do you get paid? Because the more transparency we have at the end of the day, the more we can all get paid properly. And I think it's really important. Now, if you are someone who might not have someone that you can go to to ask these questions to, my advice is to start building those relationships because those relationships are so important regardless of the end goal being to ask what they get paid, but to have that mentorship and support. Actually, recently I joined a Slack group that is for developer advocates, and this is just one example of a place that you know, you can go online, make these relationships, hear other stories and build that relationship. So I highly encourage you to do the same, whether it be for software engineering, whether it be for product management, whatever the case is. Yes, you can't just jump in these platforms and say, hey, how much do you make? But it's a great opportunity to start building out these relationships. The next thing that is really important if you are looking to uncover how much you are getting paid is honestly by utilizing these platforms like Levels FYI that I just listed. And if you are finding there is a huge, a huge substantial gap in pay versus what these sites are putting up, keeping in mind location, experience, company size, etc. But if you're feeling like you work at a company that is closely aligned with one of these, or maybe you work at one of these companies and your compensation does not reflect what it says on here, it's always worth having a conversation with your manager. We think of money as this taboo subject when it doesn't need to be. Having an open conversation with your manager around, hey, you know, I was doing some market research and I keep on coming across these numbers. What are your thoughts on this? Do you think there is something that we can do in the new year to think about a raise and then always Always, no matter what you do, keep track of everything you do. Meaning, an old manager of mine put it in a really great way, document everything that when you go to ask for a raise or go to ask for a promotion, it's almost like you're going into court and you are the lawyer representing yourself and you have this list of things to show, hey, this is my what I've done, my progress, how I have helped the company, and this is why I deserve X, Y, and Z, or why I think I should have X, Y, and Z. And it's a great way to remind your manager or people you are connecting with of your value for the company. All right, for some reason, the outro of this video did not record. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it very helpful and valuable in your compensation journey. It's something that at the end of the day, we need to stick to together, uh, be open and transparent about it. That's the only way that we will all get paid what we should get paid. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for more tech, coding, and career-related videos. Leave in the comments any questions you have. I answer all of your questions, and I'll see you soon. Thanks, everyone.